government would not tell us the next day it didn't happen and that would be all we have to go on. Imagine if we didn't have social media. Imagine all these years, these 60 years of them rewriting history and telling us certain things didn't happen or it wasn't to that scale. And even because if they can tell you when they know we've seen it with our own eyes and they can still have no shame and still insist that it didn't happen, knowing we all watched it happen, watched it live happen. It wasn't videos after the fact. We watched it while it was happening. But I'm gonna hand the mic over to Nanya. This is not okay. You know, my friend is in hiding. She's literally like afraid of her life, for her life right now, and it's not okay. It's not okay that she has to hide because she wanted to tell the news, she wanted to tell what's going on in, in Nigeria. It is not okay that she has to hide. You know, this, this, I witnessed a massacre three days ago on live. That, I have never been so emotional in my life. In my life, I have never been so emotional. Nigeria, the young people are being blamed 
for, for doing internet fraud and for, for being thieves and all, and, and, all of, and all of these other things when the government officials are the ones stealing from the country. And, and somebody, somebody had, had, had mentioned this to me, uh, I, th- I believe it was, was yesterday. And they were like, why can't people ask for, make their ass peacefully, right? Why can't people uh, go and ask, ask nicely? And, and, I, and I was fun and I said, one has been nice and, and just asking for something that will result in anything. You tell, you tell me, you tell me whether you would even be able to stand here and protest if people didn't die uh, in Selma, right, in Alabama. You tell me if you would even be able to be here and, and vote, right, or be here and, and have jobs and unpack me and, and, and even run for, for office if people didn't die for that, right? And it's an unfortunate situation in Nigeria that people have to die for what they believe in, right? We have an election, people die. We have now wanted to end sales, asking for, for electricity longer than four hours, asking for a living room. Nigeria is also 
one of the most wealth, the wealthiest nations in Africa. We have extreme oil wealth. And despite all this, we still have a lack of basic services for our citizens. And this is a shame. Our, our leadership, our government has failed us. And this ends SARS movement. This is a beginning. This is the beginning of a new era in Nigeria. And I think that if we can, the simple ask that we're having now, that we're, that we're demanding now, is stop killing us. Don't kill us. Simple. If we can accomplish this simple ask, I believe we'll be empowered to continue to demand what we deserve as a people, what our families deserve, what Nigeria as a country deserves. We'll, we'll be able to demand a country that we can be proud of. Another thing, with, another thing with Nigeria is, Chinua Chibe said, Nigeria can change today if she discovers leaders who have the will and the ability and the vision to change Nigeria. This was in 1982. This was decades ago. The generations before us have failed. They failed to demand a change. They failed to insist on a Nigeria that puts the people first. And we can't continue to allow this to happen. And that's why this movement is so important. And we all have to realize what role we play in the movement, however small that role may be. Whether it's a tweet or a retweet, or if you're a songwriter, spreading the word through art, or if you're, or whatever you do, use your craft. We have people out here who are supporting in every way imaginable. There is a role for everyone in the movement. And another thing I want to implore everybody to do, and I, I'm speaking to myself as well when I say this, is to educate yourselves. Arm yourselves with knowledge. Make sure you understand everything that's happened in Nigeria that's led to where we are right now. Because understanding what got us here is the only way we're going to get out. Read. Learn the history. And I have work to do myself. That's why I have these notes. <laughs> but I just want to implore everybody to make sure that you're finding ways that you can continue to be involved in the movement. We've made the first step by being here today. And I applaud everyone. I'm so proud of us because despite all the discouragement from the government and the lack of accountability and willingness to even yield to the simple demand of stop killing us, we're still out here, we're still fighting, and we're still demanding justice. We're still demanding acknowledgement of the humanity of those who are who lost at the Leki Toke and all throughout Nigeria. And I just want to implore everybody to be encouraged. Continue to be encouraged. Don't be discouraged. And let's just keep the movement going. And SARS! Now! And SARS! Now! And corruption! Now! And bad governance! Now! Thank you. Nigerians. Good afternoon supporters from different countries. Before I start, may I indulge you all for one quick one minute to bow your heads for those who have passed on. Just one minute of silence. Souls rest in peace. Amen. I promise not to take too much of your time. It is true that we need to end SARS. It is true that we need to end corruption. It is true that we need to end bad governance, bad leadership. But we must think beyond that. I'll give you simple stats for you to think about. The Nigerian. The Nigerian gov uh, government's um, budget for 2019 
was 50 billion. 50 billion dollars. The state of California, the budget for 2019 was 50 billion dollars. The GDP for Nigeria for 2019 was 544 billion dollars. The same for California was 2.3 trillion. Why am I sharing this stats with you? Do you know that your, your senators, senators, not the president, the senators in Nigeria earn over $2 million a month. A month. Did you know that the United States president only earns $400,000 a whole year? Why do I embrace this? The masses are suffering. I know many of, seen, many of you have seen videos of looted money rotting away in their dungeons. The other day there was a video of someone who had over $100 million cash in their house. How does this impact Nigeria? Education is crap. It, at 2020, we're still talking about giving us good road and good life. What the hell is that? At 2020, the world is talking about technology, moving the people. We're still talking about road and light at 2020. This is very sad. Many of us are seeing all the vets, all the atrocities. But while we speak here, I want to talk to every one of you and tell you that you all are also accountable for that. We all have uncles and aunts in the government that's got a contract one way or the other. I want you to remember this moment. The next time you think about them, you should hold them accountable. Don't go for contracts that you don't deserve. It takes away from the poor. Make sure you get what belongs to you, but do not rob the Nigerians of their own good. There's a study I thought about, and I was like, whoa, we're in trouble. By 2050, 2050, it's projected that Nigeria's population is going to be 400 million. 400 million people. The worst of the stat by December 2020, 2050, excuse me, more than 200 million of these people will be living in abject poverty. Abject poverty, not just poverty. I want you to think about that. We must end SARS. No. We must end corruption. No. We must end leadership. No. We must end bad governance. No. Thank you, my people. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, first, I would like to applaud um, the youths here in America and the diaspora that helped plan these various protests. Um, a lot of them took it upon themselves because we all have friends, we all, we all have family back in Nigeria affected by everything going on, and they took it upon themselves, you know, despite you know the, the relative convenience that we have. Um, as I know some people feel inconvenient, they have to leave work, they have to come down here, they have to march. But they took it upon themselves to plan this and bring everyone together. So I'd like to just you know be able to acknowledge them um, and acknowledge all of us that are here for one cause. You know, we were here on Sunday. We, we marched down to, to the FBC studios. We came down here um, to the embassy. You know, one, there are a couple of things that stood out. Here at the embassy while we're here, nobody came out to address us. Nobody came from uh, the Nigerian consulate or member of the embassy or anyone to, to address us. Well, at NBC, we didn't really get much um, of an audience. One thing that, that stood out, what, 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 one thing that stood out to me is that we cannot, as Nigerians, wait for others to fight our battles. We, as Nigerians, cannot rely solely on other folks, on foreign entities, on international governments, NGOs, and what have you, to fight our battles if we don't stand up and fight that battle ourselves. You know, the youths came out, again, for those who are not aware, when this protest uh, started over two weeks ago, 
there was no leader. There was no direct organization. There wasn't anyone saying like, this is what we're gonna do. This is how we're gonna march. This is where we should meet. It was organic. It started out from a thousand, a couple of thousand, and then tens of thousands of people coming out, all peaceful, marching for one cause. And that was just the beginning. All we just wanted was, you know, uh, a fair justice. We're asking them to reform and to replace an arm of the police, not the entire military, a unit of a police that had become the, a cancer to the nation. And even that, they couldn't even give us. They have barely responded to everything that the, the youths asked for, but two days after, they came out and said, oh yeah, we have, by the way, we are rebranding. We're just gonna change the name. Now if you all can shut up and go home. Because that's what it was. And then you have the Lekki Tollgate massacre a few days ago. To date, nobody has taken accountability. It has come back to what has always happened when we've had protests in the past. There are some folks who are older here who have been in Nigeria. They remember the protests for, for SAP, the protests for June 12, and other protests like that. There's always the unknown soldier element. They sent the army out, they will shoot at folks, kill a bunch of people, and afterwards, no one, no one takes accountability. Everybody just denies it. So soldiers just stood up in the formation, got their weapons, tanks, and decided we're going to use light bullets on innocent protesters. And when you ask them, what unit? Who are these soldiers? Oh, they're unknown soldiers. How? Where did you come from? Niger, Benin Republic, or Cameroon? So what has happened now is that yesterday's innocent protesters have now become today's freedom fighters. They started a new movement, and they don't even know it. They thought that we could keep quiet. They thought that they could bury us. But like the saying goes, we are seeds. If they bury us, we are just going to grow bigger, larger, and bolder. And that's what's happening right now. Now the world, is up, the world is looking upon us. The rest of Africa is looking at Nigeria for that change because it's going to set the precedent for what's going to happen at the rest of Africa. If you don't know, Guinea right now, they're going through it. Zimbabwe, South Africa, Ghana, a lot of countries. But Nigeria is forefront because of what has happened. This is our time. We're not going to keep quiet. We're not going to be silent. In the entire diaspora, all across the world, and in Nigeria, the fight will continue until we what? Answer. Until we what? Answer. We're going to reform Nigeria as a whole. It's not just NSARS anymore. It's going to be end the corrupt government, end the brutality, end corruption, end apathy. Everything. They have deprived us of so much across the world. Let me tell you guys, Obi was here giving some stats. Obi was giving some stats. Across the world, if most folks don't know, here in America and most of Europe, Nigerians make up the biggest population of immigrants who are the most resourceful and most educated in every, almost every country of the world. Check the stats. So why is it that in our own country, we're in poverty, in our own country, there's no education, but Nigerians can come to the United States, can come to everywhere else and excel beyond the wildest dreams and expectations. That tells you something. Our government want it to be like that so that they can intimidate us, so that they can rule over us and we have no voice. But it ends now. And what? And what? And when do we want it? Thank you. End Nigeria. End Nigeria. Kill Nigeria. Can I see the hands up of any pro person here? No, 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 no. And you want to continue along with them? Yes, 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 yes. Nigeria must be killed. Kill Nigeria. Nigeria is a blood fucking house. Yo, don't do that. Kill Nigeria!
Nigeria. Somebody. Brutality in Nigeria. No, sir. Deceiving Nigerians. Talking to me. Deceiving Nigerians. Don't get it. Not yet. Let us not know me. We are indigenous people. I didn't fight against you. People came and brought us together. You see, let us have a referendum to decide what kind of Nigeria do we have. You see, we have to have a referendum. You see, Fulani people want to make all of us Muslims. They want to make all of us Muslims. And we are here. No, they are This is the organization of the whole Nigeria. We are saying no. But these people did not die in vain. No matter where you see them, their survival ideology is what we are 
Okay? Kill, kill whoever is not. No, 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 no. Kill, okay? Let's talk. 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 Let's
I mean, we're sick of it. We're not supposed to be here. That we're here because of the wars going on in Nigeria. Okay. You understand? So, is there anything you guys can help us? You WSA, right? Yeah. If anything you guys can help us, you like one of the known media that we have in the States. If you guys can help us push this through, we need help. That's People what we are, are here now. People are dying over there. That's what we are That's here now, thing. giving you cover right now. Buddy. Appreciate that, sir. Okay. What's your name again? Dion. Okay. What will you post today? We're live right now. We're <laughs> live. Okay. Sure. Baby, you have a link? Can you grab it? WUSA 9. Yeah, uh, I don't have oh, a link. Are you live? I didn't know you were live. Yeah, we're live. Oh, okay. Oh. What is it? Okay, you're live on. Oh, you're live on. on this is kind of web. On Instagram. What is it? The web. Oh, the web. Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. You know, brethren, just to add one more thing. Yesterday, I, I almost, you know, cried endlessly. You saw all the food stuff in those warehouses, right? Yes. Those food stuff are going to get bad. COVID started at, at the beginning of this year. This is October. And they are not giving out those food for the needy. It is a shame on Nigerian leadership. And I pray God will deliver our people in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir, for coming and for praying for us. Uh, in a time like this, we always need peace as well. Yeah. <laughs> 
Mr. John O'Connor, John died on the 13th of November 2018 as a result of aggressive serial multiple beatings and torture inflicted on him. While in custody of men of the Nigerian police, SARS, headed by one SP, to buy of the anti crime department. Hands 
size. And 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 size.
Great Nigeria youth. Please. Great Nigeria youth. Please. Tap your neighbor and say, wake up, wake up, wake up. Wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up. Wake up, wake up.